A couple years ago, I started doing a video series documenting a crazy buying spree I went on where I bought uh, 50 synthesizers in one year, but I didn't stop there. <clears throat> After I stopped making the videos, I actually started buying and selling way faster, probably bought at least another 50. Um, some things didn't even last uh, maybe two two hours. Are there are a few things that I bought that I knew instantly I didn't want. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> then I stopped making the videos because I got busy making my own albums and collaborations and running the record label. So now I have a new space and I've gone from, I've owned close to 140 synthesizers and I've pared down to 26. So if you want to guess which ones I kept, I'll have um, the complete list in the description below. If you want to make some guesses, decide what you would have kept. Um, now let me show you my new, uh, new space. All right, so this is my new space. Um, it's beautiful, other than the disgusting mint lime mint carpet whatever that is um on the second floor there's actually a whole nother floor above this that isn't finished yet but uh got this beautiful hallway everything's spaced out um everything i have in this space i had in my tiny 700 square foot apartment that i was doing those other videos from including all the label vinyl all that stuff so it's crazy bought this place i filled up a 3,000 square foot plus basement um, building here with the same stuff. So that's how bad of a hoarder I was. Um, so uh, take a look. We'll kind of I'll kind of go through what I got going on in here. Probably in um, sections. Not gonna try to explain it all in one video. I'll just do a quick video that for this first one, uh, letting you know what synths I kept. We'll get into the crazy wiring. There's like 200 cables involved in here. Um, mods, uh, MIDI CV kind of stuff, all that stuff later. For now, let's just uh, get down to the, to the basics here. Okay. This is my barn cat. He's deaf and he has a whole lot of problems. We're not gonna get into it. <laughs> but uh, this is the first section. Um, we kept the Octave Cat SRM2. That's the third version. Um, I did do a video of that one in the uh, first series I did. I kept the Arp Odyssey 1975 Mark II. Um, this is a <clears throat> Synth Chaser refurbished model. I also did a video on that one already. This is a 1979 Yamaha CS30. Um, I got this from Japan. This is modified um, the way I want it. We'll uh, get into that later. Crazy synth. Um, it's known as being the uh, closest thing to a modular that vintage Yamaha ever made. Down here I got the ASM Hydrosynth um, deluxe. Um, I've had all the different hydrosynths. Um, this is the second deluxe I have. <clears throat> and then uh, down here we got Yamaha CS40M. Um, also 1979 I think. Um, this is also the second one of these I ever owned. Also came from Japan. Um, yeah. So this is kind of a Yamaha stack and with other stuff. All right, the next section, uh, kept the Moog one. Still love the Moog one. Um, down here we have the Krumar Orchestrator, uh, 1977 Stringer with a uh, bass, piano, um, yeah, um, one of my favorite string synths. Um, finally got one. 
This one was cursed, like I tried to buy like four times and just something crazy kept happening. Um, and then up here, my beautiful 1972 Moog Sonic 6 has been in St. Paul, um, Minnesota for some touch-up repairs for five months or so. So um, hopefully they still have it. Over here I have most of the Korgs um, and the Moog Rogue 1981. I've had that for decades, toured with it, did a video on that one. Um, still works through MIDI, the keyboard's pretty fucked. Um, Maxi Korg, my second one. Um, this is my MS-20, MS-10 hybrid, super cool synth. Someone wanted to play in the keyboards. Um, 1978 Originals. Um, I do like them better than the uh, remakes. Um, down here is my cheapo Korg DS8. I did a video on that one. And down here I got a Korg Trident. I waited about eight or nine months for this to come in the mail from Japan. <clears throat> it has MIDI on it, um, which I learned I don't really like because it doesn't uh, keep the splits that you apply or anything. Um, it's got a couple weird issues, but mostly it works great. Glad I bought it. It was a hell of a wait. Not super happy with that. I'm not going to get into the, that right now, but uh, yeah. Works. All right, over here. Um, Kept some drum machines, uh, Roland TR8S, um, <laughs> Korg ER1, which is kind of really bad, but kind of really awesome. It definitely doesn't sound like um, real analog drum machines or a lot of new drum machines. It definitely has that late 90s thing going for it or against it, depending on what you're into. I just like it because it sounds different. Um, drum Brute Impact. Um, I didn't like the sound of the original Drum Brute. I had one of those as well. I do like this. And it's really cheap. Everyone should have one of those. Um, Quantum. Waldorf Quantum. I have the Mark I. I already had it. Um, there is a Mark II now that has a uh, polyphonic aftertouch, which, which is really cool. It's not worth selling this to rebuy to me. Um, speaking of poly... Polyphonic Aftertouch, uh, still got the SQ80, still my main synth, my main master board, um, as it's been so pretty solid since the late 90s. I already did a video on that one. Uh, I haven't done a video on any of this other stuff yet. Um, up here we got a 1981 Cork Monopoly, um, third one I've owned. I think this actually popped up in one of my old videos as since that I got rid of, but here it is, it's back. Um, 1981, I think, uh, Polyvox from the Soviet Union, also my second one. Um, and down here is the Insonic SD-1, I did a video on that one. That's another one that I use as my master board, real nice sequencer in there, and uh, still able to control everything in here. Up here, we got the uh, Dave Smith Poly Evolver keyboard. Um, I think it's one of the coolest things Dave Smith ever made. And here is the Insonic Fismo, another real oddball. This is actually the second one that I've owned. Um, and the third real odd, digital oddball, uh, the Waldorf Microwave XTK. Probably the ugliest thing I have in here, um, but it is what it is. All right, back in the opposite corner of where we started. Um, got the Yamaha SY77, which I did a video on. Um, really uh, nice FM synth that can do a lot more than the DX series. 
um, and underneath it we've got a Roland JD800. It's the only Roland I have in here. Um, most Rolands I think are crazy overpriced. Um, this one I got a good deal um, and I just really like the layout. Um, I hate that little tiny boutique thing. I don't like software emulator nonsense. Um, the whole reason this thing was so cool when it came out is because of the build, the giant build of it, the solid build of it, all the sliders. Um, it makes playing these weird little thin digital waves um, a lot cooler and then you can stack a bunch of layers. You probably already know what it is. But yeah, so we're rolling dive in here. There's nothing here because it's over on the other side of the room. All right, finally, um, back here, <clears throat> I got the Sequential Profit X. It's also the second one I've owned. <laughs> um, synthesizer plus sample playback. And above it is the Dreadnox Poly End Medusa. Just got this, this is the last thing I bought. Um, it's over here because <clears throat> some of you might know me from playing with those poor bastards. I play synth with one hand while doing shitty Def Leppard drumming with my right hand. Um, I'd really like to use this for that band. Um, definitely the Prophet X. Um, the Medusa has really got this strange thing where you can, um, this is a whole sequencer, but if it's not playing, you can basically play each step um, one at a time. So, I mean, I could have different chords programmed for every square, different parameters for all the synth, um, like filters, uh, pitch, whatever you want. Um, and I just have a lot of ideas for that. I think it could do a lot. I've only played it a little while. I have to say it falls into that category of uh, new synthesizers with a really generic sound. The the sound of it isn't really wowing me, but um, the possibilities, though, um, I think it could be really cool. And uh, I've really... Uh, started to love the Prophet X a lot more than I did when I had the first one. Um, now that I'm getting rid of all the presets and using my craziness to make the sort of crazy overly complicated patches that I enjoy. So yeah, um, there's also lots of drum stuff going on here, but I think that's enough for now. So that was a little rundown of what synths I kept. Um, you probably hate that list. You probably think I'm an idiot. Um, let me know what you want me to show next. I plan on doing more uh, demos for some of that stuff up there. Um, mods, anything you want to know, whatever, let me know. Um, I don't put ads in my videos. I don't ask you to give me money in uh, Patreon or any of that stuff. Uh, if you want to support me, go ahead and follow the channel. Um, I also make albums. Hey, here's one now. Um, this is one that came out a little while ago. It's me with a, it's kind of like a label super group. It's got Looms and Wyatt on it from Those Poor Bastards. Uh, Nolan Cook has played guitar. <clears throat> Collaborating with the residents since the 90s. Um, Ronaldo from Ronaldo and the Loaf, another old school weirdo experimental band from England. Um, Kiri Lola, the Japanese lead singer from X Girl, who's been on Alternative Tentacles and uh, Mike Patton Zipacac label. Um, and uh, Zebulon, Zebulon Watley from uh, Sons of Perdition. Wow. Um, so yeah, I don't know, check out the label or something if you want to support, or don't. <laughs>